uh, these curves shows the music of the Big Bang or shows the CMB temperature anisotropies, which has been uh, deduced from the WMAP, WMAP data, if I uh, truly. Uh, this parameter, this quantity, CLTT, which is related to the vertical axis of these curves, measures the t temperature temperature correlation between two points of the CMB temperature anisotropies. This is observational quantity, which is given by this relation. And the inflation uh, enters uh, from this function, the scalar power spectrum, and we can check or test or examine our inflationary model via this relation to compare between uh, theoretical prediction and observation by means of observation CLTT. Now, uh, which inflationary parameter can be deduced from the Planck data uh, according to Planck team? We have two. Uh, we have two power spectrum, which fit on the observational data. The first one is uh, the first one is is the scalar power spectrum, and the second one is uh, tensor power spectrum, which are given by this equation. The Planck team uh, considered these two equations to fit on the observational data. AS and AT are scalar and tensor amplitudes respectively k star is the scale pivot which is set to 0 0.05 mega per second inverse for a scalar power spectrum and for the tensor power spectrum it is set to 0 0.002 mega per second inverse ns is the scalar spectral index which measures the deviation of the spectral of the scalar of the power spectrum from the scale invariant and DNS by DLNK is the running of scalar spectral index and so on and also at the tensor power spectrum we have NT. NT is uh, the tensor spectral and according to my 2015 result the, the observed inflationary parameters are as follows AS which is scale amplitude is ordered to my sign the scalar spectral index NS is equal 0 0.968 at 68% confidence level. And another important quantity regarding the inflation is tensor to scalar ratio, which is defined as R parameter, which has not been yet measured by the Planck satellite, but we have an upper limit on this, on this parameter, which is 0 0.11. Dr. Karani, what's going on? Mr. Miri? Ahmad? Yes. Yes. Ahmad? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, it seems uh, QMAS is not out now, but we should wait for a few minutes to log in again. Okay, okay. So, yeah, now it is logged in again. Dr. Mehrabi, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Professor Karami, you can... Uh, uh, which slide I can I have to share, say it again? 
I reach to a slide number six. I have to come back to the previous slides or can continue from the slide number six. Dr. Mehrabi, can you hear me? Yes, you can continue now. Uh, yeah. Slide number six is okay? Yes. Okay. You were here. But here I'd like to talk about the standard model of inflation uh, at a theoretical point of view. In the standard model of inflation, uh, we have a canonical scalar field in the Einstein gravity, which is given by this action. In this action, you see that the, uh, the Ricci scalar uh, is used to describe the Einstein gravity, and the second term is canonical scalar field, uh, and also Wi-Fi e is the potential energy. Uh, this is a action of a standard model, but what, uh, how the inflation occurs in the standard model, uh, look at this picture, this shows a typical potential which has a flat part at the beginning. This is an example of inflation potential. Acceleration means inflation occurs when the potential energy of the field dominates over its kinetic energy, which is uh, this take Q Mars uh, during this flat part of the potential, which we have slowly. Q Mars, may I interrupt you? I think. I think there is a problem with your network. Kinetic energy. Ahmed, uh, 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 may I interrupt you? Sorry. Yes. I think that if, if QMAS change uh, his net, maybe we will have a much better voice. Yes. Uh, maybe, I, I, I think I, I, I the, we have a problem with the network. Yeah. Q-Mars. Q-Mars. Comparable the potential energy. See if are at the fee CF. Q-Mars. May I interrupt you? Q-Mars. Okay. Sorry. You must, uh, it, I think, is it possible with your okay? next Q yeah. It's okay. Can you change your network? For example, go on 4G on your mobile device. I think I think if, if QMAS use data mobile, it would be much better than Wi Fi. Yes. That's just Uh, this contour uh, shows the 68 and another one shows the 95 percent confidence level of the Planck data. Here in this diagram you can see that the prediction of sum of potential can lie inside the observational contour like the Coleman uh, Weinberg potential, the Higgs potential and also some power law potential like phi which is uh, denoted by red bar uh, and also phi two, but 
as you can see, there are some potential that the prediction of the model cannot lie inside the observational data, which I denoted them by the red crosses. One of them is uh, the quartic potential, and another one is power law inflation and intermediate inflation. The dashed, the, the black dashed line shows the prediction of the power law inflation, and the red and the green dashed line shows the prediction of the uh, intermediate inflation. You see that these models uh, do not work well in the standard inflation. In summary, we can say here that in the standard inflationary scenario, the power law uh, and intermediate inflation models are not consistent with the Planck 2015 results. Also, some power law potential like V4 are disfavored by the Planck 2015 data. Now, the question is, the important question is, can we refine this potential uh, in uh, another framework besides the standard model? The answer is oh, yes. Uh, to answer this question, there are different alternatives for standard inflation. If you look at this slide, you can see that the standard uh, the action of standard model is given by this relation. Now we can have different choices to alter this action. The one of them is instead of R, we can have F of R, F of G, and F of T, where G is Gauss bonnet invariant term and T is the torsion. This class of mod this class of alternatives for standard inflation is so-called modified gravity. Another alternative for standard inflation is instead of R, we can have a non-minimal coupling uh, scalar field term multiplied by geometry R, which we have a scalar tensor gravity. And another choice is instead of X, which denoted the canonical kinetic term of the standard model, we can have a function of X and phi. In this regards, we have a non-canonical scalar field models. And the last choice for uh, standard in, for modified the standard inflation is instead of single field inflation described by the scalar field phi we can have a hybrid inflation described by multiple fields like phi psi and so on but uh, uh, since i have not enough time to focus on all of part of these alternatives for standard inflation in this respect i just focus on the ft gravity uh, in ample details. But regarding the FT gravity, before going inside in this framework in ample detail, it's better to have a look at uh, the telepolar gravity because FT gravity is a generalized form of telepolar gravity. Telepolar gravity, uh, if I, yes, in this slide, uh, I can show you the differences between telepolar gravity and general relativity. Uh, here, we see that Riemannian Cartan spacetime, for the Riemannian Cartan spacetime, we have curvature and torsion, but this Riemannian Cartan spacetime has two subspace, which one is Riemannian spacetime, which has a curvature with no torsion, and with Zembok spacetime, with torsion and with no curvature, and if you put R and T equal zero, R denoted the curvature and T denotes the uh, torsion, we recover the Minkowski space-time. Uh, the gravity can be formulated based on to a space-time. If you formulated the gravity based on the Riemannian space-time, you reach the general relativity. And if one formulated the gravity based on the Wittgenbock space-time, we reach uh, the telepolar gravity. To better understand the problem, uh, I summarize some of differences and similarity between uh, between general relativity and telepolar gravity. In the right panel, you see the action of general relativity, which is given by Hilbert Einstein uh, action, and LM denotes the matter field Lagrangian. And in contrast, in TG, we have uh, instead of uh, Ricci scalar, we have torsion scalar. The dynamical <coughs> variables in GR is space-time metric tensor, but we have, but in TG, 
we have the fervine or tetrad fields which has which has orthonormality relations given by these equations in gr the affine connection is given by lewitt witt and christoffel connection which is described in terms of metric and its derivative and in contrast in teleparallel gravity we have a vz mode connection which is defined in terms of verbin uh, the Riemannian the Riemannian tensor calculated at the Lebesgue connection is not zero in GR but in contrast the Riemannian tensor calculated at the Wittenberg connection is equal to zero this means that in this space time we have no curvature but we have torsion and in contrast in GR we have no torsion but we have curvature and another difference between GR and TG is regarded to the geodesic equation. In general relativity, we have a geodesic equation, but in contrast in TG, we have a force equation. In GR, the gravity is described by curvature, but in teleparallel gravity, the gravity is described by torsion. That is the torsion, which is appeared in the right-hand side of the force equation. And also, and also in general relativity, in GR, the quarian derivative of metric is equal to zero, and also quarian derivative of tetrad fields is equal to zero. Regarding the uh, Einstein field equation, if you taking the variation of this action with respect to the metric G mu nu, you reach the Einstein, uh, Einstein famous field equation, theta mu nu denotes the energy momentum tensor, and also here in TG, taking the variation of this action with respect to the Fermi fields, we reach the fields equation in TG. Look at this relation, which is very important, and shows the differences between TG and GR. R is appear, R appears in GR and T appears in TG. The above equation is very useful as it shows that T and R differ only by a total divergence this total divergence means total divergence of T nu mu nu. T nu mu nu is a torsion uh, tensor, not energy momentum tensor. This immediately implies that the Lagrangian density of Tg is completely equivalent to the Einstein Heilbert and Lagrangian density, as the total divergence can be neglected inside an integral, and Tg is equivalent to Gr. This is, means that. Uh, the TG and general relativity are two uh, different formulated of the gravity. One of them, TG, is based on the Wittgenberg space-time, and another is based on the Riemannian space-time. But both of them, uh, both of them have a similar or the same uh, result. This is why that, in sometimes teleparallel gravity is so-called teleparallel equivalence of the general relativity, but so, but if we, if we modify the R gravity to FR and T gravity to FT in the, red, uh, uh, in the left panel, uh, there are some uh, important differences between these two theory, FR and FT gravity. In FR gravity, instead of, instead of Ricci scalar, we have a function of R. And in FT gravity, which is a generalized framework of T gravity, instead of T, we have F of T. The fields equation can be obtained by variation this action and the result yields this relation for f t equal t we recover the teleparallel gravity or teleparallel equivalence of general relativity and uh, in fr gravity for this field equation if you set fr equal r we recover uh, the einstein field equation the main differences between fr and ft gravity is Due to appearing this term in the fields equation of FR gravity, fields equation on FR gravity are fourth order, but in contrast in FT gravity, the fields equation are second order. Uh, as you know, the working with the second order differential equation is much easier than fourth order, like FR gravity. This is a main motivation for the people to consider and study different subjects in cosmology, but in, but in the framework of FT gravity, like dark energy and like uh, inflation that I said here in this uh, presentation,
but yes, I come back to FT gravity. In FT gravity, as I said before, torsion of space-time instead of curvature is used to describe gravity, and the action of FT gravity is given by this relation. The part of scalar field does not change as is same as the standard model. The only difference is that, uh, uh, in contrast to the standard model, we have FT instead of T uh, gravity. Now, I like to examine the viability of sum of model which does not work in the standard model uh, in light of the FT gravity and compare with the plan 2015 results. In this regards, for the first example, I consider power law inflation in FT gravity. The power law inflation, as I said before, is ruled out by the Planck observation. Planck power law inflation means that the scale factor is given by the function of t to the power of q, and q should be greater than 1. This is necessary to having a double dot, positive a double dot, for because inflation means that the universe experiences a rapid acceleration expansion. And also, we assume a uh, uh, power law function for ft, which is given by t to the power of n. For this ft and at, According to the background equation in FT gravity, one can find the potential energy for n equal 1, which recovers the standard model. The potential energy has exponential form in terms of scalar field. And for n greater than 1, the, scale, uh, the uh, potential energy has a power law form with the power of 2n by n minus 1. Now, we are ready to put the prediction of the model on the observational RNS plane. In the next slide, as you see, uh, this is the observational RNS plane, and look at the blue regions of the Planck 2015. These curves, which is denoted by red cross, is the prediction of the standard model, which is uh, corresponding to n equal one. But you see here, if we choose n equal two, three, four, uh, one can bring the result of the result of the model inside the observational contour. Hence, we can get the, res the following result in FT gravity. The power law inflation can be consistent with the Planck 2015 result at the 68 confidence level. Another another important example which we can uh, examine its viability in FT gravity is intermediate inflation. Intermediate inflation means that the scale factor should behave as the exponential function of t to the power of lambda. Here, a and lambda are two uh, constant parameters. a should be positive, and li take places between 0 and 1. Once again, we consider a power law function of t for our FT gravity for this FT and this scale factor, intermediate scale factor, uh, according to the background equation, one can find the power law form for the potential for both n equal 1 and n greater than 1, but with different power. The first one, the power is minus 4, 1 minus lambda by lambda, and the second one, the power is different with the first one. Now, uh, we can examine the prediction of the model RNS in RNS plane. If you look at this uh, diagram, these three red uh, crosses show the result of the intermediate inflation in the standard framework, which are rolled out by the observation. But you can see that for our FT gravity with n equal to, but with different a parameter, uh, the, the prediction of the model can lie inside the observational result. So we can conclude that in FT gravity, prediction of the intermediate inflation can lie inside the 68% confidence level region of the Planck 2015 data. So now i like to summarize my concluding remarks as follows. 
uh, in FT gravity, the first one is in FT gravity, in contrast with the standard inflationary model based on the Einstein gravity, the power law and intermediate inflationary models can be consistent with the Planck 2015 data, as you said in the figures. In our FT gravity framework, the potentials responsible for both the power law and intermediate inflationary models have a power law form, but with different expression for the power. And therefore, we can refine some of power law inflationary potentials in the framework of FT gravity while they are disfavored by the observational data in the standard inflationary scenario. Especially, an important result is that the quartic potential phi4, which is important in particle physics, can be consistent with the Planck 2015 result in our FT scenario while it's rolled out in the standard inflationary scenario. Okay, I stop here and thanks for your consideration and please accept my apologies for technical issue. Thank you very much, QMAS, for a very nice talk. Due to limitation... Nobody have a question? Yes. Due to limitation in time, we have time for only one question, and I already saw one raised hand, Dr. Roshan. Dr. Roshan, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Dr. Roshan. Hello. Do you hear me, Ahmad? Yes. I can ask my question. Ask your question. Yeah, thank you, QMARS, for this informative talk. Uh, You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I have a question about the um, viability of this theory. You know, uh, uh, regarding my understanding, before applying a theory to cosmological issue, one need to uh, first check its viability in classical test. You know, it's not clear to me that this theory has a, a viable weak fit limit. Or so, could you please comment on this? Yes. Uh, you are right. Uh, FT gravity, uh, you means that the FT gravity before checking its viability at the cosmological scale, it's better we have tested in the solar system. There, yes. are, some, there are some viable papers you can uh, find in the literature that focuses on the viability of FT gravity in a small scale, uh, particularly like the general relativity uh, for the standard test of gravity in the solar system. Uh, it, ha it has no any problem with FT gravity in the small scale. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Let's uh, move on second talk. Dr. Qasemi, uh, who is uh, going to talk about testing Kerr black hole hypothesis with X-ray ref reflection spectroscopy. Dr. Qasemi, do you hear me? Dr. Qasemi? We can see your slides, but we haven't your voice. I think your microphone is not working now. 